Boom, boom. Hey, it's SMG Swole. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard, man. Syndicate. SMG. My guys don't cry, I can show you to the world, baby. Yeah. And why you think that you wouldn't believe in red rose and champagne in the side of this All right. So we got Swole off the porch with us today. Man, what's up with you, brother, man? I'm feeling great, man. How you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling good, man. I'm in Atlanta. It's raining, but you know, we here. We here. Yeah. It happens, man. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. What else have you been working on here in Atlanta during this trip, man? Uh, man, we shooting videos. Uh, I just shot two videos yesterday. Oh, really? Uh, and uh, we doing uh, working on a new tape too, man. So just the working, you know. Okay. You like know. the vibes down here? Yeah, it's all right, man. It's all right. <laughs> it's, it's congested, but it's cool. Yeah, man. so the, many the traffic don't here, play, man. man. Yeah. So many people are down here, man. You can't even move around. You might well Uber down here, yeah. but, uh, yeah, but it's cool, though. It's cool. All right. Yeah. All right, so originally from Indianapolis, right? Naptown, yes, sir. All right. So. Born and raised, yeah, for sure. So talk to us about life in Indianapolis. <sighs> man, it's rough down my way, bro. Uh, we Midwest, you know... Uh, kind of in the middle of everything. Uh, a lot of people just think it's a whole lot of white people down there and corn and sh shit, uh, you know. It ain't really like that. It's really predominantly black, you know what I mean? Uh, so we kind of, same old shit like everywhere else, you know, just trying to get it how we live, really. Yeah. You know? But it was definitely ugly coming up where we come from, you know what I mean? Lost a whole bunch of people, shit. It's, same old shit, bro, from everywhere, like everywhere else, bro, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What sure. part of the city are you from? I'm from out far east, man, like okay. the far east side, Indianapolis, uh, like Post Road area, out that way, you know. I got you. So mm -hmm. how would you describe your childhood growing up there, man? My childhood was really cool, bro. It yeah. was all right. Uh, my mama, was, she did her thing, worked and shit. My daddy, he was around, you know, he was doing his thing. Uh, I had a stepdaddy. I was cool, bro, you know. I chose the street shit, you know. But it was all right. I can't complain about it, you know yeah. what I mean? I just wish I would have probably went another way, but shit, it is what it is, you know. Yeah. So uh, how old would you say you were when you jumped off the porch? <sighs> i say about 14. i say, like... I, I had one foot in, one foot out at about thirteen, mm -hmm. but by fourteen I was I was out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Did you have any good guidance out there? Any older brothers, big homies, OGs, or were you just figuring it out as you went? I had the OGs. I had some big homies. I had my big cousin. You know, I had some people. Uh, but as far as like brothers and shit, man, I, I kind of made my own brothers. I'm my only child, so I don't got okay. no siblings. But uh, I kind of just, you know, chose my family as I went. But I had some old school cats that I had uh, met when I was probably about 17, 16, 17 uh, from Chicago. They kind of showed me the ropes, really, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really as much, yeah, that's it. Okay. About 16, 17. Yeah, yeah, about that time. Yeah. yeah. Shit. How old were you when you had to go to prison? Man, I waited until I was like 26 years old to go to prison, bro. So I, I went, shit, my whole teens and everything without really getting in, the, I mean, without getting caught for nothing, you know. And then shit, shit kind of spiraled out of control a little bit, man. I landed in the slammer, you know how it go, shit. But I wasn't in there long, but it shook my ass back quick as hell, though. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But shit, it was definitely ugly for me, man. What was the biggest lesson you learned from having to sit down for a bit? Boy, I definitely learned that most of the oh. niggas that's out here ain't really your niggas. I learned that quick and fast, boy. You be like, damn, what happened? Niggas just be gone, bro. They ain't, you know. And uh, definitely learn you ain't got no female in there either. You know, shit. <laughs> that shit's over with. But shit, I, I ain't fucking with that shit, bro. I ain't going back in there, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I learned my lesson on that shit. You feel like you kind of turned your life around when you came home? Oh, man, hell yeah, bro. Because before I went, I was on some whole other shit, man. I, uh, I had started, like, when I was probably, like, 19 or 20, I started uh, 
taking the pills and shit, the tabs and the Percocets and shit like that, and drinking lean, and you know, it just kind of went crazy, bro. It went all the way crazy. So shit, I definitely shook back. When I came home, I was like, bro, I ain't never taking another nothing, you know what I mean? That shit had me gone, bro. I'm talking about dopamine status gone. That shit fucked up, bro. You know what I mean? But shit, man, that shit, that was about almost seven years now. So shit. Okay. I'm good now. I don't fuck with nothing, bro. You know, yeah. I'm just chilling. Shit. Salute to you for that, man. For sure, for sure. Was it easy overcoming that addiction, though? Especially being locked up, man. Oh, bro, that was the worst shit I ever felt in my life, bro. Like, fucked all up, man. I ain't. Honestly, man, I kind of, I think because I jumped in it the way I jumped in it, I really didn't know much about it. You know, like we don't really know in our age group, we really don't know about the opiates and shit. We don't know how fucked up the shit really is. We don't know that we gonna really be sick in a motherfucker and can't do nothing. We don't know that. We just thinking like, I really didn't get in it like on some trying to be cool shit or nothing. You know, I had, I really had the whole true story. Like, oh, I got an injury, I, you know, shit like that and really just got addicted and then got fucked up. But I definitely didn't know it was gonna be like that. My grandma tried to tell me a little bit, like, don't be taking them pills, you're gonna be sick, you're gonna be, you know, but shit, you know, you ain't listening to that shit until you wake up one morning and you're like, damn, man, like, I feel bad in the motherfucker. And then when you take one, you start feeling different, you know what I mean? And I'm like, damn, this shit ain't this fucked up now, you know? Yeah. And it was just gone. There wasn't nothing I could do, it was too far, you know? But yeah, this shit ugly, bro, it's ugly. Hell yeah. Do you have any advice for anyone else who's either trying to overcome it or just wants to take a, a stop do, doing it too? Man, bro, what I tell everybody is, uh, you, I mean, if you don't think it's a problem, then shit, you got a problem. You know what I mean? Most of the time people just be like, shit, I'm cool, bro, you know, because you're getting a little money or whatever you're doing, you feel like this shit cool and it ain't really going to bother you, you feel me? Because you, you don't really notice the money. But shit, niggas is drinking lean and shit, spending three, four, five hundred, six hundred dollars a day on that shit. You know what I mean? Like, can't no motherfucker spend, ain't no person in the world, Jay Z and Beyonce ain't trying to spend six hundred dollars every two days and shit like that on some shit that just go in your stomach and you don't ever see it again type shit. You know what I mean? So, man, if you trying to quit, bro, you definitely can do it. You just got to keep it pushing and get away from all them weirdos, man, and, you know, take the first step. Once you realize the first step is definitely realizing that you got a problem. And after that shit, you know, go on, head on about your business, but you better get the fuck away from that shit, bro, because it ain't the same no more. You know, motherfuckers is dying out here off that mm -hmm. shit, bro. You yeah, know, real shit. That shit real, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. well, big ups to you for overcoming that, man. man. Turning you, your man. life around like for that. For sure, for sure. Appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so when did this music journey begin for you? How long have you been rapping now? Man, uh, I've been I, I've been rapping for a while, but I say seriously, the last four years, like I've been like uh, an artist for real, you know, like a okay. real artist. I got my own record label, shit like that. So like about four years, like going hard for real. You know, I always pity patted and played and did whatever I was doing, but I'm talking about like for real now, you know. Oh, yeah, that shit real, man. So were people surprised when you started rapping, taking it serious, or did they kind of see it coming for they you? They seen it coming, bro. They yeah. seen it coming. You know, shit. I, uh, I, like I said, I'm a music head, bro. I love music, man. So that's what I do, you know. That's all I do is fuck with the music. All different kind of country, all kind of shit, bro. So <laughs> they, my family already knew I was going to do something with music, you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Who were some of your favorites that you were listening to uh, when you were coming up? Man, I used to listen to No Limit, Cash Money. There you man, go. You know, shit. Sebo. I was listening to the old gangsters and shit, man. Uh, we had a, uh, we had some dudes from our city. You know, uh, we had Printy Mo and G Stack, and we had some people like that that kind of inspired me to rap. You know what I mean? And then shit, Jimmy Max and I. You know, shit. We just. Listening to that type of shit made me want to do music. Then Boosie came around when I was out there doing my thing, so I kind of was fucking with Boo heavy, you know what I mean? Jeezy and Gotti and you know, same old shit. But shit, yeah, that's definitely what we was riding to though, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I think it's pretty obvious, but how'd you get the name Swole? Man, <laughs> man the crazy thing is, bro, is like most people really think that I got it from me, my size and shit, but like I really didn't, man. Like my dude, uh, my dude five footer back in the day uh, in middle school, like, man, he used to be like uh, calling me all kind of funny names, Swole and it's all kind of corny shit and shit. And, uh, but my dude Nate one day was like, bro, hey, uh, Nigga, they need to call you swole, nigga. Them motherfucking pocket stay swole, nigga, something. And I kind of just took it and ran with it. You know, I'm big. I, I guess I was getting a little money. They thought I was, wasn't getting no goddamn money. I was young as hell. <laughs> but, you know, shit, to them, we were balling, you know. And uh, I just kind of took it and ran with it, bro. You know okay. what I mean? Shit. Yeah. So what would you say is the message in your music then? Man, I'm talking to the struggle, bro. Like, I... uh. I really just make, I mean, I really, that's all I want. I just want to be heard. I want people to know that shit, you really can come out of whatever you into. It don't matter what the fuck it is, you know. Uh, man, I really just talk to the street niggas, the niggas that shit out here moving and grooving and, you know, trying to stay out of the way and take care of the kids, do whatever the fuck they doing. But we definitely need something to ride to. So, you know, that's who I'm talking to, bro, the struggle, you know what I mean? Okay. So what's the name of your label? SMG, Syndicate Music Group. Okay. Uh, so, the Syndicate Music Group. <laughs> you know what I mean? See, bro. That's my shit, bro. Yeah. So what was your inspiration or motivation to start your own label? Man, uh, I always wanted to be shit. Oh, uh, cash money or no limit. Or okay. P type of nigga. You know what I mean? So I just was like, fuck it. Ain't no sense in me keep on running around talking about trying to fuck with somebody else shit when I can just do my own, you know. I already had niggas around me that uh, basically fuck with me the long way, you know, and shit, believe in what I got going on. So might as well take off and do what we can do, you know. Yeah. So that's where it came from. Me and my brother, uh, White Boy B, shit, we uh, just came up with it, bro, and took it and went on, you know, shit. It's definitely growing, getting better, shit. Yeah. You got any other artists or is it just you? Yeah, I got another artist. Uh, Name MBS Dio. Okay. Yeah, I hear him soon. He'll be up here, bro. He coming. He cold, man. A little youngster. He's 17. He cold. Bro. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. He coming, man. It's on. <laughs> yeah. What would you say is some of the biggest challenges that it is as being an independent artist, man? Man, to me right now, uh, it's really the industry, period, bro. Like the people that you got to deal with to try to get to the level that you're trying to get to, you know, like this Instagram shit then came around and Facebook and all this shit. So it's like the new world. Mm -hmm. So it ain't really like back in the day when we would walk up on a motherfucker, shake a hand and, you know, make agreements and do whatever we doing by real life shit. Now it's out. You don't know who you dealing with. You don't know who the fuck you sending your money there. to, bro. You, don't, you know yeah. what I mean? They didn't took so much bread from us, bro. Just trying to get to the next level. You don't know who you fucking with. So that's the hardest challenge to me. Like shit, we can do everything else, but we just, the money good, all that shit, we just don't know where to put the shit. You know, you were sending shit to some fool that's sitting behind the camera and shit. You don't know what the, f you know what I mean? Like it's crazy, bro, it's, just, it's crazy, bro. So that's definitely the only challenge for me right now, bro, is uh getting where we need to be and getting around who we need to be around. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Once we get there, shit, it ain't no stopping. You know yeah. what I mean? Shit. Yeah. And you live in Tennessee now? Yeah, I'm in Tennessee, bro. Right outside of Nashville. Okay. I've been there for like four years now. So okay. shit, I feel like moving there kind of is where what really made me go serious, go hard. Because I got time to like sit back and think. Because it's slow as fuck where I'm at. But shit, uh, I just got to think, you know, focus on my family and shit. And, uh. I'm like, damn, man, I'm about to just take off with this shit. I, you know, I'm going to go in now. Fuck it. I really was going to stop, but shit, everybody like, bro, man, just give us one more tape, man. And then if it do something, man, and shit, I dropped another tape and shit. It really took off, bro. You know what I mean? So I was like, fuck it, man. I'm in here. I'm, I can't go nowhere. <laughs> shit. Hell yeah. What was that tape called? Uh, I just dropped one called The Art of More. Okay, yeah. Uh, I got that, and uh, I dropped uh, BTB. That was the tape that I dropped, though, that everybody was like, just drop one more. That, when I came home, I had wrote that shit, most of it, when I was locked up. Oh, yeah. 
And I just let it go, man. Shit, it took off, you know what I mean? So, shit, I can't stop now. I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> shit, for sure. Um, can you explain that title, Art of More? Why you chose Art of that More, title? man. To me, uh, I made the, the Art of More, to me, was basically the whole tape was just to explain shit, what you, the, the trials and tribulations you got to go to to get more, you know, like, it's just all about what we, that's all everybody want anyway is more. So shit, it's the order more to me. Like I'm basically explaining how to get what you want. You know what I mean? And shit, that's really it, man. I just, I don't even know why the fuck I called it that, man. It just popped in my head one day, bro. I swear <laughs> yeah. to God it did. It just like order more. Oh, well, I know Yo Gotti had came out with a tape back in the day called the Art of War or Art of Hustle or some shit. Mm -hmm. And I definitely read the Art of, uh, Art of War and shit. So I'm like, damn, I remembered the book. My first plan was to name all the songs off the chapters of Art oh, of really? War and shit, but it didn't work out. But that's where it came from, bro. Just, you know, all that shit compiled into one. I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> shit. For sure. I got to. Yeah. What can you tell us about this song and video for Realist? Uh, that's my shit, bro. Uh, man, I, uh, that song there was like a song I wrote in the car. Like, I write my best songs in the car. I don't know how, but shit. I'm driving and shit, and I just be imagining some shit, thinking and shit. And that song was just more of like a fuck you pay me type of song. You know what I mean? Like, fuck everybody, nigga. It's syndicate shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, shit, that's it. I yeah, feel that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What can you tell us about the new single, Strip, for me? It's that shit right that's there. That's the one? Man. It's that shit, yeah. Uh, that's for the females, man, because I really, I always feel like I don't really make, like I said, I'm for the struggle, so I really don't make a lot of female songs, you know what I mean? Like, for the chicks, but they fuck with it, but I just was like, damn, man, I got to make something for the female. I got to make something. And shit, man, my dudes shot me that beat, man, and I was like, damn. Like, I, that was it, bro. I just, that motherfucker. Nah, I like that. I still, I'm riding to that right now as we speak. So yeah. yeah. That's the shit, yeah. You gonna shoot a video for that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I got one coming, man. We working on one, for sure. So you got a ne next project you working on? Yeah, I don't got a name for it yet, though, man. Uh, but I'm definitely working. I got like six songs already. Okay. And I'm still uh, writing and shit, but. I guess I'm gonna drop something else. We working on singles a lot right now though, because okay. that's kind of what the world then kind of switched into. You know, they don't really give a fuck about a tape no more. Shit. Yeah. It's just everything is, you know what I mean? Gimme, gimme, gimme. And <laughs> Real I'm gone. shit. Shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So shit. Yeah. You Hell could yeah. drop an album today. Come Monday, they're like, all right, what, what's next? What you got? What it's else like, you got? Wow, we done played this out. It took me a whole year to write this motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, was, that shit crazy, bro. But yeah, that's how it is now. So we straight singles right now. Yeah. And then, uh, shit, might put them all together and make a tape or something just to drop some shit, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, it's also a lot easier to push one song, one yeah, video you know, yeah, than a full bro. project, man. It's a lot easier to put the money behind it and do it. I mean, I uh, we spent so much bread just putting out tapes and shit, and then most of the time, you don't even get to shoot all the videos because by the time you get to shooting, shit, you down there and burnt the people out of the tape. They ain't even listening to the motherfucker no more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So shit, now I'm thinking we just coming one by one with it and shit, lock it out like that. No, that's smart right there. Yeah, yeah. You been working with any other features? Yeah, man, I got one with, uh, I'm trying to get a lot of features, man, but right now we in the work with uh, Sasha Go Hard, trying to put some shit together okay. with her. Uh, we got some shit going on. We got some shit mixed up. I can't really speak on it right now, but shit, it's coming though, you know yeah. what I mean? Shit. What yeah. about producers? Who have you been uh, rapping over? Which beats? Who's man, beats? I got dude. Uh, I fuck with uh, this dude named Evan, man. He's so hard, bro. Like, uh, that's really the only person I deal with right now. But yeah. um, I'm going to fuck with some different people down here in the A and just meddle around and see what I can do. But for right now, the boss Evan is who I'm fucking with, bro. This shit hard. He killing shit, bro. He's got your sound, huh? He got my sound, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So shit. Yeah. What? What's next? Well, what else you working on, man? Taking over the fucking world, bro. <laughs> shit, that's, 
I mean, that's the only thing I'm working on right now, really, honestly, bro, shit. Uh, but y'all gonna see me, though. I'm coming, bro. You know what I mean? We here, we on the porch now, see, you are, it's up. <laughs> it's <laughs> up. Hell yeah, yeah, it's up. Shit. Any last words, any shout outs before we wrap it up? Man, shout out to the motherfucking syndicate, man. Shout out to all my kids. I got hella kids, bro. So shout out to the kids, man. Shout out to my brothers, man. And every motherfucker that fuck with me, you know. Shout out to Nap, shit. Uh, Fly Heavy Media, my brother, shit. We out here, bro. Syndicate all the way. SMG Swole, man. Follow the fuck out of me, bro. I want all the followers. Come on with them, motherfucker. At SMG.Swole, nigga. That's it, shit. Lock in, baby. My guys don't cry, I can show you to the world, baby. Yeah. And why you think that you wouldn't believe in red rotation pain in the side of this creed in California, rainy weather where the shit ain't sick?